All right, guys, welcome back to the Gibson B25. I think we're into the third episode now, and um, it started off with us removing a plastic uh, bridge. Um, that bridge was adjustable, and it came from 1962 or 1963 when it was determined that everything plastic, including that Ken doll up there that looks just like me, of course they all do anyway somebody thought it would be a good idea plastics was the new future well guess what it didn't work out too well on this guitar so in the first episode we discovered that the bridge that was on it that had basically corrugated roof screws in it it was meant to be there <laughs> remember that anyway there's a playlist up there check it out now we're at the point where we are going to put um, some fine details into this guitar to get a conventional bridge on it so let's just get to the bench and get to work okay guys i want you to know that we are right back at yeah Good guitars go here to die. That's why it's a suite, not a room. Anyway, moving right along. This guitar here has had a lot of work in this area right here, and we've measured everything off. You remember all the marks and everything there, center marks, intonation marks, where the bridge goes. And so when we're putting this on here, notice that we've... I think I talked about this in the last video. There are some streaks cut in here with a Dremel tool. You don't take a chisel because if you take a chisel or a scraper and, and cut those in, it pushes wood, it displaces wood. It takes it from here and puts it to here. So you're only hurting yourself. If you use a rotary tool of some type to make these marks, it'll give the, the glue a place to stick. But anyway, We've marked off the center every way possible, and now we're setting this on here. So this is the fine tuning stuff. So we put this on here, and we know that we're gonna put a clamp on this thing that's gonna hold everything down. Let me pull it out here. Keep it in a bag, right? So anyway, we know we're going to put something like this on here and then we're going to put a clamp or two right here and clamp this down and then once that's all in place oh by the way before we move on here um, these clamps that go here it's always a good idea to pad those uh, put some cork paper in there or something and wrap some uh, painters tape around that you'll see that but also there are braces and things sometimes where they're going to get in the way or something like that. So if you notch out a simple cutoff like this and put it on there and anticipate where the brace is going to be, you see that there? You can also take some tape and get this set up where this isn't sitting on a brace right here and you're turning this down and the thing is sitting back like this and you're crushing a brace. So notch a few of these out like so and again, we're going to pad this off before we put this on here. But that said, my shop is finally starting to get set up where I got some stuff behind this in good shape. But that said, once we start cranking this down to get it flat, we really want to make sure we've done everything we can to make this level. And it's not really level. There's something sticking up here. And we know these are flat. Everything is good here. So there is a little bit of a wow here. Now, in arch top guitars, we take a piece of paper, uh, sandpaper like so, and we put it in the area where this is going to be, and we would, with an arch top, we would basically put that where it is going to be like so and make sure it's long enough and then we would take the floating bridge and do that now what do we do with this the exact same thing except we're not going to glue an arch top 
bridge down. So what can we use to mark this off that's going to tell us where it's high and where it's low in relation to the bridge? Well, you can't use solvents. You really don't want to use marker or anything like that. You can use chick flick teal chalk. Check this out. So wherever this is sticking up, you can see that that chalk is sticking there, right? You see that? Now, if I take the bridge turned the right way, making sure there's nothing underneath it, and I line it up and go like this and press down a little bit, look at that. Do you see that? It's there, there, and there. So this area right here is bowed up a little bit. Now you know we've steamed this guitar, but we're not done steaming yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this here. And this is, again, relative to where this bridge is gonna go. And we are just gonna go like this. We're pushing down fairly hard. And I've got that mark there, and I've got this centered up. So while I'm doing this, and we turn it over, look at that. The only place that it's sticking up now is over here. So I'm going to take and make sure that there's plenty of pressure there. Again, the whole thing is have these marks lined up. Look at that. Now we can just pull this back. Look at that little tiny bit over there. We're just going to keep doing that until there is no chalk left on the bridge. Perfect. All right, that is looking great. We'll add that piece of paper to the mess. That was pretty easy. So we're going to wipe everything off of here. And it's time to put glue on, right? No, it is not. We are going to put our bridge and clamp on here. And guess what? We are actually going to steam the top with everything clamped down. Believe that or not. Let me get this set up and show you how. The welcome to the world of you never have enough hands now. We've wiped all that off and I've got everything set where this is going to go. So rather than try and struggle and get the clamp on here and whatever, I'm going to use some of this tape. We're going to stay off of that as much as possible and hold that down. And we are going to get that bridge as close as possible as where we need it to be. Okay. There we go. Now, when we put our clamp on here, well, they make pricey ones, they make some that aren't so pricey, but the main thing is you don't put these into the bridge. So you're gonna have some piece of wood here, and it is never going to stay where you need it. So you go back to this handy dandy tape dispenser and you grab a couple more pieces 
and you're going to put those right in the middle there and right in the middle there like so and we're going to set this on and you're like dude where's the glue we don't want any glue yet because like i said we're going to take the problem that we're having with that little rock in the bridge and we are going to clamp everything down and we are going to make sure that we put some steam on here and we'll adjust this together so this is tricky notice i have the tape on here now notice that this is plastic here and notice that i have this that will slide everywhere now there is a bridge or there's a brace right here and there is one right here so i need to know that this right here when i get this in like so i can put that and as long as i get it in between those braces like so now i may have to cut a shorter one or do whatever I do but I really want this to sit as level as possible okay so once I get everything in here clamped up I have a n number of these that are different thicknesses by the way I'm in the market for those little ABC blocks that we used to have when we were kids anyway I'm going to get this clamped up you see that this isn't moving and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute Okay, we've got everything lined up. And I am sure glad that I taped everything up here. And I am not going to try and winch everything down really hard. Because here's the trick. Have you ever seen one of these? If you haven't, I can't tell you what it is. It's a secret. But I can take this piece of paper and go along and see, is there any space under that bridge? Now, even though I'm not gluing it right now, I still don't want that. Okay? So unbeknownst to you I've stuck some rags and things in the in the back of the guitar and the bottom of the guitar here because I am going to now cinch this down and I am going to put a steam line in here and we are going to let this heat up and steam up and then We're going to let it sit, and everything's going to get used to each other. Now we'll be able to start cinching things down. And again, we're going to be using our... A little bit better footing on this one here. There we go. That's pretty good. Let me get the steam line going now.
All right, there we go. We are steaming up now. Get this in here. Spread that clamp just a little bit. Get this turned the right way. Go in right under there. There we go. All right, there we go. Everything is nice and tight. The steam is trapped in there. I can feel it warm right around here. That's what we want. And the old paper test is going to look pretty good when this all comes together. Let's wait for, I guess it's steam to dry. Okay, guys, welcome to later. Now that the steam has cleared and it's several days later, we're going to put this magical cloth here, like so. We're going to loosen up the clamps. Mm -hmm. And we're going to find out that this bridge has mysteriously adjusted itself to the top and vice versa. Okay, guys, you have to be smarter than the clamp. Let's take all this scrap apparatus out of here. And pile it up over here. Okay. We will get that out of there. Fortunately, I have everything taped off here. As you see, now I have some magic hid behind everywhere here. Okay. There we go. Alrighty. Easy money. Now, there's a little issue here. We know that this isn't glued. It might as well be because it fits oh so perfectly. But... I have a dilemma. Okay, here's my dilemma. This bridge has to be in the perfect spot because if it's not, ooh, that fits nice. The into, intonation will be all messed up. Now, I've shown you on arch tops. Let me reach behind me and get the Beverly Hills ruler that if we go from, you can't see up here, but trust me, if we go from the back of the nut, starting with this ruler here, this yardstick, go from the back of the nut to the 12th fret, we make a mark in the middle of the 12th fret, okay? And, of course, right there, I've shown you this before, just a minute, We saw this in another episode. Gibson B25 right there. That's what it says. So, I put this in the middle of the 12th fret. And I want to make sure that this bridge lines up with that. Now, what on the bridge? Well, it has to be the center of the slot where the saddle goes because this is graduated you see it's it's tilted a little bit so we're gonna have to put all them clamps and all that scrap apparatus back on so what do we do to make sure that everything is lined up well let me show you something. I want you to get a block of wood that will fit between the 11th and 13th fret. I want you to measure this distance and I want you to put a mark in the center this way in the center this way and then I want you to take 
a square and I want you to put a line running right down the middle this way. Then I want you to take a piece of fret wire after you've taken a saw and lightly scored that line. Once that line is scored with your saw, you take your fret wire. You put the tang side up. You see that? And then you run down this like so until you've got a slot that the fret wire fits into. You see that? Ta-da! Good. Then I want you to take on the side. I want you to measure this way, find the center. Then I want you to come up about 10 millimeters right here and I want you to drill all the way through the block at that point with a small pilot bit then a quarter inch bit and then finally a 5 16 bit and on both sides I want you to take a countersink and smooth that out then I want you to come up to the top of the block. That's the opposite side of this. And I want you to measure this way and this way. And I want you to take a Forstner bit and drill down in right where the center is. I want you to drill with the Forstner bit. You have to do this first. Deep enough to put in a T-knot. A T-nut looks like this, like so. You see that? Now the T-nut will not fit in yet because it's got this part. But don't try to drill a bigger hole that will accept this because it will be a mess. But you, you can tell like this. You see that? Once the Forstner bit will have drilled a hole about that deep, what a scientific measurement. Then you take your 5 16 bit and you drill down until you intersect the hole that is coming through this way. Then you put on your T-nut. You take a very small bit, drill three holes accordingly, and then you get three chick flick teal screws. You fasten this into here and then you take a thumb screw, a quarter inch thumb screw which is the size of your T-nut threads and you drop this down in there. Then and only then do you find a walnut dowel. Walnut. Very important. If you don't use walnut you will not get the results that I am that I can't promise you you get anyway. You take this quarter inch dowel, you go through this hole like this. It would come out here if there were a hole. You want to be able to adjust this and this T-knot helps you once you decide where you need this to be to screw this down and get it right where it needs to be. So what does all this mean? Well, let me show you. Do you see the knot? Do you see the 12th fret? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Do you see that? Let me move this up here a little bit. That is the 12th fret. Trust me. Now, I'm going to take this gadget that I just showed you how to make. Ooh, ah, clean one owner. See that slot right there? You see how this slides? See how it's got this protection tip up here? You see that? I'm going to put this slot on the 12th fret. What do you know? Then I'm going to slide this part right here forward until it's at the back of the nut. Then I'm going to screw this down. Notice that this doesn't move anymore. Then I'm simply going to pick this up 
because intonation is what? Back of the nut to the 12th fret, same measurement from the 12th fret to, that's right, turn it around, put it right back where it needs to be. And what do you know? Put it in the middle and voila, our tip of our 39 cent scrap apparatus, actually it costs mm, about $3 or four to make this. That tip is right in the middle of the slot for the saddle. So when we go to putting this all together, we take this off, we put our glue on, we're going to make our final adjustment to our bridge. And just before we put everything on, we're going to make sure that when we're tightening it up, this here will fit between the clamps. And we're going to be so good to go. You are welcome. You sh This is so cool that you should call that guy Ken and tell him about it. Never mind, I am Ken. All right, guys. We actually glued this on finally. Yeah, I used tight bond. I didn't use hide glue. And, um, oh, hey, look who just flew in. It's Chick Flick Teal Bird. Yeah, he's, he's a snowbird. He flew in from Potatoville, Idaho, cultural capital of the world. And um, he's chirping some secrets here that he thinks we might need. And the first one is when you are gluing and you got squeeze out happening here, you take a magic cloth and you put it up here and you put this artisto vessel of water and then you take a paintbrush and dip it a little bit like that and that's what you use to get the squeeze out you don't use some kind of scraper or something you want to remember that we're going to have to go in and make this blend because this isn't some junk pile guitar that it's going to be okay for us to mess up so paintbrush and some soft toweling and that will work now I do want to tell you that remember our fancy gadget for finding the intonation point that the slot for the saddle the middle of the slot to graduate a saddle anyway we put this here found the back of the nut and then flipped it over and found the 12th fret to the center of the saddle. Well, this thing also worked out good because on the saddle itself, we identified, yeah, Chick Flick Teal was, Pointer was chatting with his compadre, Chick Flick Teal bird over here. Caused a great delay at great expense in my, anyway, down there, there is a mark in the middle of the bridge and there's one back here. So all we did was lengthen this out a little bit, put it on the 12th fret and made sure this dowel was straight. I think I'm gonna replace this with metal so it doesn't warp or something anyway. That helped us line up. Now we're just waiting for glue to dry. All right guys, do you know what time it is? Yeah, that's right, it's glue dry 30. 30 minutes after glue has dried thoroughly. So we're going to take these clamps off of him. We're going to take a look at our bridge and what comes next. Alrighty, there we go. I'm going to give you another look at what I was talking about with this fancy gadget we made. We put this, like I said, on the 12th fret. We centered it up. We lengthened it out a bit. And 
we were able to line up. Where are you, Chick Flick Deal Pointer? Center mark there, center mark there, and of course that was there. So now, yeah, there's no room to fit paper under there. That is good to go. So, the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to pull this off. And you remember, we plugged these holes where the bridge pins are going to go. So we're going to drill those out. And the way to do this is we're going to put this over here and just leave it sit there for a minute. That's okay. But we've got a couple tools we're going to need here. First off, I'm going to take an awl and a little hammer. Sometimes I use this one for fretting. And we'll find the center of the hole before I start drilling. And I'm just going to tap it a little bit. Get something to start right there. And then we are going to drill a pilot hole. It's not very big. And then once that's done, we're going to take a reamer and we are going to finish those holes. And this is not a very big reamer. It fits down in there. Do not go at this after all of this work we've done with a big drill bit and mess everything up. Just be patient. I will give you another hint. Whenever you're going to go at uh, drilling these holes out, We've already taken an awl, not an owl, but an awl, and made a little um, a pilot hole there. So instead of going at this and having it dig in right away, when we put this in, we're going to make sure that it seats. And we're actually going to run the drill backwards so it spins backwards and gets going. And then once that seats, then we can come in and... There we go. And then it's just a matter. You don't want to put a lot of pressure there and blow everything out. We're going to go in with, I made a sander out of a piece of PVC pipe and some tape or some adhesive backed sanding tape. But we're just going to go in like this now. And we're going to work this until we are slightly in contact with the holes coming through the bridge like this. This is nice and easy work. You don't want to overdo this. And of course I can feel in here and see what's happening. Yeah, feels good. Anyway, five more to do. Let's close this out. All righty. Look at that. It looks way better than before, and now somebody can go on into the future with this guitar and get because it is uh, about 60 years old, believe that or not. It's in good shape, uh, and now again, someone will be able to set this up with a decent bridge and not have to worry about it. I'm pretty happy the way it turned out. We had to put plugs in and re-drill those and now this is going to go back up to Malibu and get uh, the setup and the saddle put in it and some finish work and it will be done. Anyway, I've appreciated the opportunity to work on this guitar and um, short of that plastic bridge uh, I think it's a good guitar. It doesn't have F-holes, but don't hold that against it. I'll keep you posted once this thing gets done and gets played. Hey, thanks for watching. Give me a like and a subscribe if you haven't. And we'll get back into the world of art stuff pretty soon. Unless this Martin back here takes a hold of our life. I don't know. You know how erratic I am. I will see you soon with something. I guarantee you that.